Hey you guys, what's poppin'? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am excited to be finishing this segment. <laughs> plenty of reasons as to why I did not film. I just want to simply start with the very first one. What is going on in our world right now? I mean, yet alone our country, there's so much going on. There are far more important things going on than for people to come to my channel and like learn about some life experiences or have some sense of relatability. Right now there is a lot that needs to be learned with each other, with everything that's going on. So I decided that I would come back and film. I have come back to work um, about 75%. Nothing is 110% for anybody, but you know, we do our best with what we have and what we're given. I hope you're ready to finish this segment and I am a little nervous, okay? I'm wearing a sweater. I wanted to be kind of like fall like, you know what I mean? Just really just give it a moment. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's September, but you know, it is snowing elsewhere, but not here in Texas. Of course, in the South, it's not snowing. It is really hot outside, but I got some five, five. I got some fall vibes going on behind me. I am so excited for fall, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into the segment. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here and let's get started. Okay, so where I left off was where Bryson and I are in communication and he is full aware that I've broken my laptop at this point and the frustration has started to build. It was already like, you know, standing next to each other and now the frustration is building because people in school were starting to figure out things and I didn't want it to. The whole reason for me to even go to school in Norwich was to get away from everything that was happening down here. And it's not like I did anything bad, of course. It was just a life that I was forced to live that I didn't want to be having that, like, kind of hang over my head or um, being put on me in some way, shape, or form. Even though it doesn't make me look bad, it just... I just wanted to go someplace to forget about it. So the frustrating hat built to the extreme and when I broke my laptop that was like I didn't know who I was I was already going through so much and already going off in the left lane it was something that no one had ever seen in me before until that point and even me I would look at myself in the mirror and not realize who I was and what has truly happened to me Bryson and I are talking about what happened and he doesn't know what to say. I think what bothered me so much was that Bryson never had anything to say. And some things he did, but when it came to what I was going through, he always pushed that aside. It was always like, okay, you're going through that, but like, you know, me. You know, and I get it. Bryson was going through a hell of a lot. I understand. Like, going through all of his transformation and then going... I mean, we're freshmen in college, or, I mean, we're, like, being dogged on, and all kinds of stuff was happening to the both of us, but it was still no excuse for him to not be there for me, even though I was being there for him in a lot of ways, or I did my best to be there for him in a lot of ways, and so once I had discovered that, you know, it was pretty much out there and that I, there was like no turning back. Like once someone in your school knows besides your significant other, there was no turning back. It spreads like freaking wildfire. Like sickness in school spreads like wildfire. It's the same thing with like people getting knowledge of you. And it's very scary. It's not something you want to experience. And I can't explain that in any other way. It's very frustrating. And Next thing you know, I'm going to school, like going to class. This is throughout like the next couple of weeks. I'm going to class and working on this case. I do the entire appeal. And then all of a sudden you go to college and these kids are like calling you a murderer. I mean, you want to talk about bullying at its finest. That, I mean, if there was... One, t one reason to have a target on my back, it was because of that. And I feel like a lot of people come from small towns. A lot of people 
aren't used to things like that. Like, I'm from a big city. Like, news like that is actually not surprising to a lot of us, shockingly and unfortunately. But up there in the north, like, it's small town. Everybody is, like, knows everybody. States are, like, within two hours apart of each other. Here, you drive ten hours, you're still in Texas. So... It is such a, an excruciating thing to have to go through when you have people calling you names on a daily basis. And I I don't know if I told my professor about it. I don't really remember. But I'm sure if I did reach out for help, no one did. Because this is where the slope began to fall and I began to crumble. I don't even know where to freaking begin with this because... It was a lot. I believe at this point we had graduated. I want to say we had graduated from Bryce and I's relationship became even more of a center of attention. And because we could do what we wanted, not necessarily, but we could do more than what we were doing before. We could like look at the sky and like not have to square everywhere. Doing that gave Bryce and I a sense of freedom Babe, and I think our freedoms are both completely different. I got a sense of freedom with space <laughs> and I think he got a sense of freedom to be himself As opposed to because meals. at this point we were no longer Which like going through Rookdom or you know mm. going through the whole free the training was just terrible. I don't think that we have the same ideas and Bryson and I became That's like this and when I tell you his friends got involved with everything I mean they got involved with everything like he like Bryson and I would bigger about something he'd run and go tell his friends and I'm like what the hell is your problem like this is supposed to be between you and I not you and I you know C D E F G. it's supposed to be between us and he didn't understand it so it started a lot of conflicts between us because I thought we were gonna get closer like this and because now at this point we are no longer technically rooks we are like freshmen now we are cadets I do want to say with Stout Star and Weitzman that was kind of his chance to get a little closer a friend of mine and I from college we're talking about Weitzman. Yeah, my staff started. We have pretty much concluded that he basically started this chain of fire. And I want to say because he didn't get what he wanted. Now, I'm not going to say get what he wanted. And, you know, if you watch this whole series, you pretty much know what I mean when I say that. I am a firm believer that you don't really know somebody until they don't get what they want from you. That is so true, okay? Test people, because I've tested a lot of people and they have failed. Don't even get me started. And we have concluded that he started a lot of the mess because he didn't get what he wanted from me. And I will tell you this much. I know that a lot of it was my relationship with Bryson. I have been very vocal about that, and I know what he was really and truly wanting and in a way, shape, or form, it was a sense of power is what he wanted. Control. What it is that we really make mistakes with when it comes to our country or our military. And I might be wrong. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But I do believe that at, at a, such a particular young stage of training, we allow a little too much power and it gets to their heads. I didn't ever let power get to me like that, ever, like, even with and without rank. It wasn't ever like, oh, I'm above somebody. For me, it wasn't like that. For me, I was just there to go to school and do what I was doing, playing sports, and get a good education. That's what I was there for. But with Staff Sergeant Weitzman, I feel like it was the complete opposite. I felt like, yeah, he was there to get a good education, but... <sighs> I'm just not going to bring up the family chain because that's just a whole other story. But basically, he was there because of his family. And with that came power and a sense of control within himself. He didn't get what he wanted from me. So therefore, he started the fire with a lot of people and started making people turn against me. 
Now, how this started and how I even began to realize what the hell was really and truly going on behind the scenes was every single time someone came to me about something within my family, I would, I would ask them, oh, who did you hear that from? Or where did that come from? Well, so-and-so said that staff star in white's van, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And then I started to hear it again and again and again that it was staff sergeant weitzman to tell you the truth he makes me so frustrated and i don't want him to come for me at all because i really and truly possibly don't know but i believe that he has an issue with gay people now i do know a few people who have an issue with it they won't admit it, but the way that they are with particular gay people, with women in particular, they have a way with how they say certain things or do certain things when it comes to women dating women or dating transgenders. He has a big issue, okay? Now, how I started discovering that it was an issue was one of the cadre members of another family, Rook family, had brought it to my attention in a diversity meeting that I had. I will insert the voice memo here. Um, it targets towards more like gay people and race at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of the predominantly white people here on campus were not obviously raised around a lot of diversity because when they came here it's like, oh my god, maybe there's like a little bit of shock. Like you're going to the games and you're seeing more like diversity. There are um, gay people who are being targeted, but those people don't necessarily say, oh, I don't like you because you're transgender mm -hmm. and I don't feel comfortable around you. They just say they don't feel comfortable. So your cadre has to, the, you know, the people in charge have to listen and say, I don't feel comfortable. So they're going to remove that person away without even a response. Mm -hmm. And when the actual response is, I don't feel comfortable around you because you're gay or you're transgender and I don't understand it. Basically, they were talking about, they didn't talk about him particularly like in front of everybody in this diversity meeting, but they were talking about their issues with homophobia. I don't know what you call it, like the phobia of gay people. Like, they don't like gay people, okay? There's a problem with it. There's a problem with it on campus, okay? And I knew exactly who they were talking about when they brought this up. Basically, moral of the story is there's an issue and there's obviously an issue with like minorities there's a lot of racism going on on campus i'm pretty sure there still is none of it ever changed when i was there trying to help solve these problems with my school well when i first got here like in the dorms there were a lot of instances where people would write nigger on like our boards outside of our doors or like downstairs where like the pool area is and i thought that was kind of like crazy like they would draw stuff like it was like a stick figure of like one black stick figure and like a hollow one so basically saying it's a white one and the white one had like a bubble coming out of it saying like nigger to the black one and that was like drawn on one of my friend's doors and you're a freshman mm -hmm. so this happened at the beginning of the year yeah my first semester okay. did you guys talk about it uh we had that meeting with dean mathis first and i spoke about it there okay. and ever since then I haven't really seen anything about it. Narrowing down the people talking shit to me all led back to Staff Sergeant Weitzman. Now, I'm not going to blame every single thing on one person. I do know that my cadre and some of Bryson's cadre, if I'm not wrong, um, were heavily involved in starting a shit ton of rumors. And I will say this. I know that my roommate one of them, I'm not going to say which one, but I had a couple roommates where my Rook sisters had a big issue with me and Bryson, and Bryson in particular. Long story short, she tried to get us in trouble after Rook them had ended and said that Bryson was like slamming doors and like screaming and yelling at her. Like, being 
I mean, just acting out of his character. And anytime Bryson was ever around our room after Rookdom, after we graduated from Rookdom, he, he was there with me. It wasn't like he just showed up to... I mean, yeah, he would go to see if I was there or whatever, like, check up on me or whatever it is, or, like, if he's looking for me. I think we got our cell phone privilege back. I think we did. Um, but sometimes I wouldn't answer because I was at practice and he didn't know or whatever the situation was. I was training, doing something. And I just know the character of Bryson. Bryson is dramatic when it comes to particular things. But why would he, like, be slamming doors and, like, yelling at you? Unless you did something to him. Unless you, like, talk shit to him or, like, put him down in some way, shape, or form. Then I completely understand why he did that. But I don't understand why the hell she went and lied. If I can find these screenshots, you guys, I will insert them right here. Long story short, she goes to my cadre one day and says all this stuff. And then they pull Bryson in. So Bryson was staying with me in my Rook sister and I's room. But he never stayed the night. Like, you were allowed to stay till, like, midnight. But midnight or 23 hours. I don't know if it was 11 or midnight. My Rook sister in particular, her significant other, like, would stay the night all the time. And so she, like, lied to the cadre and had told them all the stuff that I had said before and that Bryson was spending the night. But Bryson had never spent the night, right? And because we weren't allowed to yet. Like, you're not allowed to do that yet. All of a sudden, one of my cadre members, not going to say which one. What was it yesterday? Yesterday, um, they had, like, demanded me out of my room and told me like after hours, which they're not supposed to unless it's a life or death situation, they demanded me out of the room saying that my boyfriend was spending the night, which he wasn't. It was her boyfriend who was staying the night. And there are witnesses that my boyfriend would leave every night from his cadre and my cadre. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, Gabby said that he was staying the night, which I have proof that she says she knows he didn't stay the night, that it was her boyfriend staying the night. And so, um, my cadre pulled me out of my room basically saying that like um, Bryson staying the night and you're doing inappropriate things in front of people which was not true and I have proof of that as well okay. so um, I felt bullied and targeted so I went and knocked on my cadre's door at around like 2345 and I reported the situation and I told him I don't trust I told Staff Sergeant Weitzman I don't trust you I don't feel comfortable and safe around here and I'm leaving after hours so and, and then and where I did left you go to feel safe I went to the library okay and um until until they closed and then I went to the U building um until around 12 45 and then I went back to sleep okay in your room yes Be did you feel more comfortable because people were asleep or just because that's where that's I had no where, choice you had no choice okay right. well I want you to know that you do have options okay mm -hmm. you don't have to stay in a space that you don't feel safe in mm -hmm. um, you don't feel supported in because right. we absolutely want you to feel safe and supported okay. okay can I leave right now you I just don't feel safe like I don't want to be in this room or like anywhere I just want to leave. I just want to go, like, talk to my mom. I don't want to be here. Comes banging on the door. Boom, boom, boom. And it's five of us in there. It's my two Rook sisters, my Rook sisters, boyfriend, and Bryson and I. And uh, Bryson's like, I'll get it. So he gets up and he gets it. And she, like, tells him, like, demands him in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how to explain it, but she tells him. You are not allowed to stay here. You're not allowed to be here, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, and, like, whatever. So Bryson's like, hold up. He closes the door, 
and I think he says like let me talk to you or whatever so he goes and talks to my cadre members or something and Bryson's texting me and he's like someone lied someone in your work family lied about me and you and I was like what the fuck so I'm like messaging him like what do you mean someone lied he's like um like 20 minutes later he texts me he says Gabby um Gabby lied and started saying that I'm like aggressive when I'm around you guys and all this other stuff and I'm like what the fuck I'm like no there's no way like I'm making excuses for my sister because I'm the type of person where I will give you the benefit of the doubt okay I am not someone who takes what someone says like that unless I've experienced it for myself I don't believe in hearsay. My grandfather used to always tell me, believe none of what you hear and half of what you see. So I just was like, there's no way. Like I was defending my sister. And he told me, no, your sister, blah, blah, blah. She told, and how I know is because I'm in a meeting with your cadre right now. And my cadre are here too. I mean, they're about to go get your other rook sister. So I was like, oh my God. So they had been there for at least an hour or so talking about this whole situation. So Bryson comes back to the room. He gets his stuff and he leaves. Her boyfriend never left that night, but Bryson left. And the next day, Bryson tells me I'm not allowed to like go to your room anymore and all this other stuff because your rook sister so-and-so lied. And I had messaged my sister. I was like, hey, like... There are these accusations, like, you know, is it true? And she was, she denied, denied, denied. And Bryson was like, I was in the meeting with her. They pulled her into the meeting right when I told you they were. And she admitted that she was saying all these things. Of course, she's not going to say she lied, but she lied. Bryson didn't do any of those things. So because my rook sister said all this shit, she starts going around telling her friends and like her teammates because she played sports too that oh Rena blah 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 Bryson blah 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 and starts telling everybody so like all these people talking shit is because of my rook sister and my own damn cadre member staff sergeant Weitzman shut the fuck up like who what why when where like what did I ever do to you and you know what's so crazy is because I think and not that I think I know she started doing this shit because I was getting far more attention than her girl you can have it seriously I gave no fucks about having attention I was so focused on myself and dealing with a bunch of shit at home and with Bryson and his transition and then me trying to figure my shit out like bro it was a lot that I was going through I was not worried about attention at all I didn't want attention I'm not that type of a person I can't stand like literally when I go into a store and I know that there's like men around and like I'm like somewhat cute that day I just like put my head down or like I'm just like you know with whoever I'm with and like talking to them and not looking at anybody because I feel uncomfortable I don't like that I just I don't know and but she's an attention seeker so therefore she started all this shit all these rumors and all this other stuff that Bryson did this and Bryson did that and blah 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 and blah blah and Dan and Daniela uh well they don't say Daniela but she said, Rena approves of all of this stuff. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like, Bryson is not aggressive like that. He's aggressive in other ways, but nothing like what she said. He, like, the complete opposite. So, yeah. That's where the shit talking started. Boy, did it transition. Because then a lot of the shit got to my teammates. And my teammates... I don't know but I will tell you this my teammates because I know they're gonna watch this video but I want to I want to be nice but I want to be honest at the same time we're going towards the end of my freshman year and Bryce and I have just gone through so much so much has happened 
at this point I think I had already attempted suicide a couple of times and one of them was medicine Tylenol all kinds of stuff like stuff you take when you're sick so I started attempting to do that and not eating so I was like at one point I did the shower thing I did the medicine thing and then the eating stopped and my relationship with food was already so bad all of this happening just I didn't have an appetite I didn't have an appetite at all a lot of shit had happened at this point um, I had moved Rook families because my Rook sister just lied so much I was like so beyond freaking frustrated with her but I love my Rook family I love them so 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 much and boy did we go through a lot together we literally went through living hell and back together people that I I really truly really thought cared about me but clearly they didn't know me that well or didn't care to know me that well because they were willing to listen to somebody's bullshit instead of looking at my actions and looking at who I am and how much of a hard worker that I was yes I did miss a lot of classes with my Rook family and a lot of activities with my Rook family but I had volleyball I was doing cheerleading I had so much there was so much I was doing I had NU Alliance and trying to help Bryson with that and there was I was getting myself involved in school and I know I missed a lot of involvement with my Rook family but it doesn't mean that I didn't want to have a great atmosphere around me I want the best for everyone around me I want everyone to be happy and successful and the fact that I couldn't provide that for anyone at home, there, in my own relationship, within myself, I couldn't because there was so much going on. The suicide attempts fired. And I mean, I never in my life had thought of doing these things to myself. A lot of the people saying a lot of the things that they said to me, about me, whispering, like, I can hear you, bro. Like, I know you're talking shit about me. I got bullied for smiling. I'm from the South, okay? We have Southern hospitality down here, okay? It's a real thing down here in the South, y'all, okay? I got so made fun of because of that. Oh, she's smiling, but yeah, her Rook family hates her. But inside, I was dying. I was dying. Oh my God, I was dying. <sighs> At that point where Bryson and I were just like, I don't know we had split and we had went back and forth and there were a lot of things that that were just straight up unnecessary for the both of us we just started acting out I started acting because I was taking like these like medicines I don't know I, Tylenol Advil I don't know I would just take like a handful of whatever I had like a day and like eat maybe once a day maybe maybe of that and then because I had like no one there a lot of people hated me because of my fucking rook sister um and because whatever Whitesman is saying and whatever his fucking control that he didn't get I really had no one and my crying for help was necessary because there are already so many signs when I start crying for help and no one helped me. And moving in towards the end of my freshman year, I felt unwanted. Imagine you getting a scholarship somewhere and you're playing sports and you're doing your best even though you're in fucking depression. Like I was literally there physically but mentally not the entire time and I've only been through that twice in my life and that was one of those times. I just, like I lost myself. And I, like I don't want to blame anything on anyone. I don't want to say it's one person's fault. Like it's Weizmann's fault. It's my cadre. It's Bryson. It's his friends. It's my sister. It's, I didn't, I don't want to blame anybody at all, but the blame is there. I even left last night telling my cadre that I was leaving barracks because I couldn't even be in the room because I felt uncomfortable. I would not ever, 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 ever hurt someone, but 
me hurting myself. I was like, I don't want to cry. Me hurting myself has had to be the lowest point in my life. You know, I thought like maybe like. I remember one of my cadre members had came up to me and said, Rena, I didn't see you at breakfast this morning. I actually haven't seen you at breakfast the past month. Where have you been? You always have breakfast. And I was like, I'm busy. And I just made excuses. But really, like, I didn't want to show my face around anybody. Like, I didn't want to be around anyone. I didn't even want to be around myself. I just felt like no one really wanted me anymore. And I was in a place unwanted, like, imagine you have everything, like, you're living the literal fucking American dream, and then, like, they don't want you because of, like, lies and bullshit and people just not taking the chance on you and not giving you the opportunity to just be yourself, and I did, I never got that opportunity with my family, I never got that opportunity with my school, there was so much I wanted to do there. I wanted to help my school grow. I wanted to help, you know, so many different things and start new projects and be heavily, heavily involved in school because that's what I did in my high school. I wanted to make change. I wanted people to walk out of there going, you know, with scholarships in grad school. And I mean, there was so much I wanted to do, but because of all the bullying, I never got the true chance. I was bullied by grown ass adults, by first sergeants in the military. And I began to rebel because I started to be treated differently. I started feeling like I had no one. No one was really truly there to help me. And you're supposed to be there to help people. That's what you're a leader in our military, right? You are a leader, correct? That's why you have the position that you have because our country says this person has proven that he and she is a leader. But you fail to do that to so many of your cadets. So many people have come to me and have told me that they have had the exact experience, if not worse than me, because they weren't heard. I tried to have you hear me out and you didn't listen to me. None of you did. You not only failed me, but you failed yourselves. You're supposed to be a leader in our country, correct? Your actions say otherwise. It makes me so upset. I believe that our leaders in our country are supposed to be people who are truly relatable people. Who have really and truly gone through traumatic experiences and want the best for others. Survivors. Survivors should be the leaders in our military, not someone who got straight A's. You can have straight A's all you want, but did you save your platoon or did you just let them get bombed? It's things like that that irk me about our country. I cannot believe that we have military personnel who have gained their rank because they got 100 on a test. There should be so much more than just education behind it. Giving somebody a rank should involve relatability. Who they are genuinely as a person and test them through that. Test them physically, educationally, and their intelligence. Because intelligence and education are not the same thing. You failed yourself and you're failing your country. It is so sad that you have someone right here who wanted the best for you, for your school, for your state, to make things better for you. Because up there, no one goes to school up there. Everybody goes to school down here. 
Everyone wants to go to UT. Everyone wants to go to a &M. Why? Because we don't throw each other under the bus. Because we really care about each other. We really help each other up. You don't sit there and try to create a narrative so everyone can hate that person so they can have a terrible time in their military career. You don't do that. What is your problem? I hope it makes you look great. I hope you feel great about yourselves. Like all of you. You know who I'm talking about. Those of you watching who were there standing next to me. Who were there talking shit about me. I feel so sorry for you and I pray for you. My suicide attempts began because of you. I don't like the blame, but it's there. We all go through things and life is life and experience, but it doesn't mean that you need to treat people differently. Because you're singling me out. We're supposed to be treating each other equally, not talking shit about them, not banging on their doors, not terrorizing them. Can I leave right now? You. I just don't feel safe. Like I don't want to be in this room or like anywhere. No, you may not. 